there she is. We're gonna get through this detail together, okay? Easy. I know we have a history together, but we're gonna have to get through to this together. Nice and easy. Oscar with OQ Detailing. In this video, we're gonna show you why rinseless wash is the perfect solution when detailing a classic car or a vintage car or just a car that is a little bit older, rinseless wash is the way to go. You don't wanna use a pressure washer when washing a vehicle like this because it can have a lot of adverse effects. Older cars, the seals around the windows and just different areas, they're older so they're more brittle. So you don't wanna damage them by using a pressure washer. A pressure washer, uh, the pressure will be too strong even if you lower it because it can have water leak into the car through the seals and just a lot of different adverse effects. So a rinseless wash is the perfect candidate for a situation like this. And with the rinseless wash, we're gonna be able to detail the entire car. Yes, you heard it right, the entire car. That includes the interior as well, especially one that's well kept like this. A rinseless wash is such a versatile product, so follow us along, enjoy the show, drop any questions, and don't worry, I'll have everything linked if you wanna check it out for yourself. Okay, so for the wheel and tires here, as you can see, they're not that dirty. So I'm going to be using all clean diluted 30 to one just to give it a nice cleaning, but it doesn't need that much cleaning power because as you can see, they're not that dirty and they're well maintained. So as you can see, you saw me use the sprayer here to rinse off after we're done cleaning. It has rinseless wash inside as well. And just for an added touch, we have quick beads here. Quick beads, we're gonna apply it to the wheel, gives it a layer of protection. You can also use ceramic gloss. And it's, this one, yes, it can work. It works usually by rinsing it off, but it, it can also work if you just rub it in. It's not a big deal. The product will, will work great. In some cases, it might even work better. And we're just gonna go ahead and apply it using our microfiber. And it's just to protect the wheel a little bit. And now it looks magnificent. So we're just gonna repeat the same process in all four wheels so you can do the same. Another reason why you don't wanna use a strong cleaner for the tires is you see this white line. This is very normal, classic for you know, older vehicles, classic cars. I think it's called the white wall, but basically a stronger cleaner can in a way start dissolving some of the white and it smears, like it'll, it'll take it away. Like it'll in a way strip a little bit of the color from the white wall and it will leak onto the tire. And uh, it's just not a good situation. So. so for those who don't know, what is a rinseless wash? So a rinseless wash is a, is a car wash. You have this concentrate that you add to a bucket of water. And when you wash the vehicle, after you're done washing it, you don't have to rinse the vehicle afterwards. You can leave the solution on the, on the vehicle and just go ahead and dry it. And it doesn't harm the finish. It doesn't scratch the paint. It's totally safe. And that's due to its technology, especially those polymers. The polymers encapsulate and emulsify the dirt and the grime, and they prevent it from damaging the vehicle once you're gonna dry the car. So basically, how is it different from a traditional wash? Well, in the traditional wash, you would have your bucket with your soap and then your sponge or mint, whatever, and you wash the vehicle and then the soap will be on there, the residue, and then you take your hose or pressure washer and then you have to rinse off. Yeah, so you rinse the vehicle and then you dry. So in this one, you don't have to do that last step. You can just go ahead and wash the vehicle and then dry it. So the best way to do it is to pre-treat it with some of the solution let it dwell for a little bit and then take your your sponge and then you glide and clean it and the sponge also has these um, grooves trap the dirt in there and they keep it in there and then uh, you go ahead and take your towel afterwards and then dry it off it has a lot of lubrication so it's safe and it won't again it won't damage the paint and that's basically what a rinseless wash is the amazing thing about a rinseless wash also is you only need a little bit you only need half an ounce 
to a gallon of water and, a, and one capful is about half an ounce. So this bucket has around three gallons. So we just need three capfuls of this 16 ounce bat bottle. Okay, so this vehicle is, like I said, not that dirty. It has a minor layer of dirt, but basically in most cases, the first step you wanna do is take a pump sprayer and pre-treat the area with your rinseless wash solution. And basically this is gonna help to start encapsulating the dirt and breaking it down. So you just go around the vehicle and I'm just gonna do the hood right now. Another great benefit of rinseless wash is as you can see, it's very environmentally safe and it wastes a lot less water. So it's a great option for most washes. Then in our bucket, hopefully the camera can catch it. We're gonna have our, our sponge and we wanna ring, ringe it out just so that it's dripping, but it still has some of the solution in it. And you're, we're just gonna start in the middle and with single straight motions, we're gonna go ahead and start washing the vehicle. Now, it may be a little bit um, confusing at first or hard to believe because the, the solution, the cleaning solution, it's kind of clear, clear color. So you may be thinking like, is it actually cleaning? Does it really clean? Is it doing anything? And the answer is yes. Again, we're gonna do another panel the other half it has some bee poop so we're removing that I don't know if it's just in California but here in California cars get a bunch of tree sap and bird bee poop little yellow dots kind of like that and after a couple panels you can turn your sponge around and these the other side that has not been as, that is not dirty. Continue the rest. And at this point, I can take my towel and dry the surface and it's no problem at all. Totally safe, won't harm the finish and car is completely clean. Another thing you could do is if you're really worried about the paint, you could add C6 mist, which is a dry aid or any dry aid of your choice, doesn't have to be this one, or ceramic gloss, like a sealant or a wax. So this uh, ceramic gloss, it's a great option. So we just spray it. You don't need too much. And then we dry. So this does help dry a little bit better, but also it's adding protection. So we're cleaning, and protecting all in one take. And now, super smooth, super slick. Now, although I started and showed you the hood, that was just for an example. You always wanna start from the top down because you wanna bring the dirt from the highest part to the lowest part so that you're not going kind of back and forth and fighting against gravity. So always top down. So we would start with the convertible top and then work our way down. Now, the other reason why I didn't start from the top is as you can see, the convertible is not closed. Neither me nor the owner could close it. It's really difficult. So I have to be a little more delicate and make sure that I don't get water seeping in through here. And I'm gonna show you how to clean this convertible top. I wanna show you the texture. So it's not like a cloth mesh. It's more like a vinyl, like a plastic rubber vinyl. And it's not that dirty, thankfully. So. Same thing, using the rinseless wash. So we start from the edge. And then we do the same process. And then take our towel. You can see all the dirt. You can see, you can see it's dirty. And then see that? I'm gonna show you one more time. You can see.
see it's dirty so look at the sponge you see how it's dirty and then when we dunk it and then we just grind it against the grit guard a little bit which you don't always need to super clean again so this stuff definitely cleans and it works so since this car is kept under garage and well maintained i didn't think we would need a decontamination step but after doing a test pot we did so here's a variable that depending on your circumstance you may or may not need to do we're going to take our rinse solution again and we're going to wipe it to apply it to the paint again just to give it make sure there's still some in there and we take our decontamination tool so perforated decontamination towel and if it needs to this is a step that you may or may not need most likely you do an iron remover so an iron remover we're going to spray one on the towel one on the panel that we're going to work we set the panel there where we sprayed and we lightly see if you can catch the sound through my microphone again So hopefully you can catch it through the microphone that it went from sounding coarse to smooth. Again, this, this, this side is smooth now, and then this side. Hopefully that can catch it, but anyways, you repeat the process throughout the whole panel. Basically what we're doing here, we are removing any bonded contaminants. So different contaminants from the environment get bonded on the paint, they get attached, and they don't come off with just washing it because they get attached to the clear coat. So the only way to remove them is using a decontamination towel or a clay bar or any clay media and an iron remover. And when you use them in conjunction, you have the best results. Things like brake dust, iron particles, industrial fallout. For example, when you use your brakes, it releases brake powder, which is called brake dust. That brake dust gets on your panel of the vehicle, the paint. With the morning dew, it encapsulates it, and with the sun, it bakes it in, and, and that's how it gets bonded. That's one of the ways it gets bonded. Also, because paint is always retracting and contracting, right? So. If there's a dirt particle with the when it's hot and when it gets cold right it may get trapped like that there's different ways that they get trapped hopefully you learn something new there and after that we're gonna take our sponge again because we want to rinse it off if we were not using the iron remover we don't need to rinse it off but since we are using the iron remover we have to rinse off the panel so make sure it's well rinsed if you were doing you could use a pressure washer if you had it at this point on a car that's not a vintage or classic or if it was just a regular car you could use a pressure washer but we just rinse off the area make sure all the iron remover chemical is off from all the panels and I don't have enough storage in my camera so I won't show you everything but make sure you rinse off the whole area then you take your sealant or wax, spray it as I showed you earlier, take your towel, and you're good to go. Okay, so for cars like this, tire dressing is super optional. It depends on the client. Um, the last thing you wanna do though is make these super glossy like a donut. These type of cars, they don't look good. They look great just with natural, in most cases, no dressing at all. However, you can add a little uh, sheen just to give it that original new tire look without making it glossy or shiny so um, I was looking for products and in this case uh, I could either use the ceramic trim restore so even though it's for trim if you read the label it's for tires as well because of uh, it's a cream solution and it's non glossy it gives it especially you just put a little you just put a little bit or in this case I'm gonna use this one because I have a little bit left and I've used it before and it doesn't give it a lot of gloss if you just apply one light layer. So Cerakotes, 
tire shine and it lasts about six months they say so you're gonna see how this one it barely gives it any it's just a sheen a light sheen not glossy not shiny not sparkling we don't want that here just OEM new tire look look at that this is perfect you might not be able to catch it on camera because of the reflection of the sun I am sorry that this is the reality of detailing outside you get the raw reality but you just want to make sure you get in here and it just gives it a nice new finished look okay so I'm gonna show you how to clean the glass now and we're gonna use the same thing rinseless wash in a bottle is also good for cleaning glass it's actually really good for cleaning glass so all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our solution light mist we're gonna take two towels one towel is gonna be for the cleaning and the next towel always completely dry it's gonna be for buffing off we call this the insurance wipe basically making sure none of the chemical was left behind and we didn't leave any streaks and the final touch is we want to make sure we look at it from all angles and to double check to ensure that there's no streaks left behind and you would just repeat that process throughout all the windows and all the glass okay so I'm gonna show you a couple attention points to make sure that you pay extra careful attention to when detailing a car like this first is inspection of the paint so as you can see obviously this car is gonna have a lot of sore marks I hope you can see that against the reflection of the Sun all these tiny like spider web scratches and there's some major scratches as well uh, I don't know if you can tell but as you can see from this angle the paint is is damaged not in its best state I would say so some people might want to look at that and hey sore marks let me polish take an aggressive cut and pad and go at it and then burn through the paint or just make a mess so you don't want to a car like this you want to leave as it is you just want to make it nice and glossy you have to live with the fact of the sore marks because paint preservation is most important at this point if you are you must take a paint depth reader and take a reading of the paint before you do you must take a paint depth reader and take a reading of the paint and if you are you must use the most soft non-aggressive at all super super I like this white one from Rupes and the most drooling polish literally just to give it some cleaning not really removing any clear coat if you do need a paint reader I'm gonna have this one linked it's from Amazon super cheap about 70 bucks 65 bucks and uh, it's not exact and perfect but it'll give you a general idea of how much paint you have left the second thing is as I mentioned to you the seals so you see the rubber seals all around the car um, all around the car so all the seals this is why we're not using a pressure washer if we were to take a pressure washer and start using it on a car like this so much water would get inside here and would leak into inside the car so as you can see the rubber seals they're old you know so you don't want to damage them using pressure from the pressure washer this is why we're doing a rinseless wash another thing you want to be extra careful especially when washing is any emblems or mirrors like these mirrors we want to be very delicate because these parts you can't just find them anywhere you know they're not really replaceable so you want to be super careful of any emblems badges like this right here this one's not as um, delicate but things like this super delicate so you want to make sure you're careful with those for example here when I was washing it this screw as you can see it's loose right and so if I wasn't careful actually I did knock it off I'm not even gonna lie so but I was being very gentle and so that's why you want to be it's like 
the movie 60 seconds, the GT Shelby 500, you want to make love to the paint. You want to make love to the vehicle when, when cleaning it. You want to be very gentle. That's what separates just the car washer, regular detailer from a professional. Another thing is clean the wheels and tires. As I mentioned, you don't want to use a strong cleaner because it can fade and mess with the white wall. This white line here, it can fade it out and then cause damage and smear all over the tire. And also, you don't want to use, uh, I would try to stay away from water-based dressings. Personally, you can use them if you just use the lightest spray, just one and then use the whole one to just give it that sheen as you can see here. Just has a nice, sheen like a new tire but it's not shiny it's not glossy nothing nothing like that so be careful when cleaning the wheels and tires is another thing another thing to be careful of is anything that has hinges like the windshield wipers or this interior piece this windshield i mean this window piece you just want to be careful when you touch everything everything's vintage and so we want to be very delicate when cleaning anything no strong cleaners, nothing like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to clean the interior using your rinseless wash. Make sure you soak. I use two brand new cheap microfiber towels. Cheap means price. They're relatively good. This one's are the Costco ones. And we wanna make sure it's all soaked, that it has rinseless solution in the whole towel. And then we're gonna rinse it Make sure we don't have no drippy. And then we're gonna fold it into fours. And we're gonna have a second towel that's completely dry. So we're just gonna go ahead and use the one towel that's moist. And we're just gonna go ahead and go ahead and clean everything. The rinse this wash. Here's something that you gotta be careful here. I'll show you right now, but basically, it's coming off. Then you take your dry one and you just go over the same area you just cleaned. You gotta be gentle with that, actually, it's coming off. So, wow. So, this is another area you can see that you gotta be really careful of. It's uh, like a laminate that's coming off already. I didn't, obviously it was already like that. There's nothing I could do. But I did take some of it off here in the towel because it needs to be cleaned. So there's no way of going around it. You could have left it behind, but it needs to be cleaned. So a very gentle wipe and just, um, but areas like this, you gotta be careful about. So nothing you can do about it. This is the real side of detailing. This is the real side of detailing that YouTubers don't show you. Things like this. Okay, we take another side, the clean side. And we're gonna clean the dash. Look at this. Nice. And then we take our dry towel and we just go over it. That's all we need. No need to overthink it, simple. And all this we're doing again with the same product, rinseless wash. You know, with all these switches and buttons, again, we wanna be very gentle. We don't wanna break them, we don't wanna damage them. Another thing about cleaners, strong cleaners, you know, a lot of people use super clean degreaser or uh, what is the other one? Super clean and like, I don't know. With things like this, like those might discolor and strip off different par different parts of this, different, you know, components. So this, you gotta be very gentle, very careful. Like a, like a baby, you just wanna caress it. That's all we need, just a little love, just a little cleaning, you know? We don't wanna be too aggressive. Just caressing. One part that you wanna be Pay special attention to is the steering wheel. There was a study that showed that steering wheels are dirtier than a cell phone, dirtier than a toilet bowl. So every car that you work on, 
You want to make sure, sorry I'm shaking, I'm holding the bowl with one hand and trying to record the other and clean. Look at that. All that grind. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is that you do the same thing for the seats. You get your moist towel. With the seats you can be... You get your moist towel. And with the seats you can be a little bit more uh, aggressive. Not aggressive, but you don't have to be as gentle. Still be careful, but they're a little more sturdy. Cleaning, cleaning. And this just cleans, you know, it doesn't strip off anything, won't harm anything. This is why I rinse this wash. It's magical. And uh, you can see, you take your dry towel and just go over it. And that's all you would need. Nothing crazy. Be careful with hinges, especially the door hinges and doorknobs. Don't pull them too aggressively. Be gentle so you don't break them off. And the last thing is you want to do a quick vacuum. Spot clean any stains if possible, if that's the type of service they're paying you for as well. And you should be done. So there you go. There you have it. So there you guys have it. You just took a whole course, a whole free course on how to detail a vintage car, a classic car, a car that needs special attention. You just learned all these things for free. So help a brother out, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, put any questions in the comment section that you might have and leave any comment as well. I'm going to have all the products I use linked in the description if you want to check them out and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much and God bless you.